You can download the answer in the video for free. Link in the description. For a dynamic menu UI control system that allows for mouse, keyboard, and controller input and has support for managing menu pop-ups and animation. First, we will define a custom resource that will hold all the data for each menu and sub-menu. This is required to enable and disable the input of buttons on pop-up menus and regular menus, as well as add support for mouse, keyboard, and controller. Go to the script tab, select file, new script, name it menu config. Inside, we'll first make this extend resource. This will turn the script from a node into a custom file that can be duplicated, only holding the data of variables that we export. We will then define a class name of menu config resource. This is what we will use to create copies of this resource, as we intend to have an array of this resource, with each copy representing a different pop-up or sub-menu. We will then export six variables. These are the various properties that we will use for each pop-up and sub-menu. Additionally, we export these so they are editable from other scripts. Otherwise, if you don't add export, then these will become local to the resource and won't be editable from other scripts. Menu parent is the highest most node of the pop-up menu, and will be used to enable and disable visibility of the pop-up menu. Default button is the button that we focus when opening the menu. This is needed for keyboard and controller. Button parents holds all the parent nodes of the buttons within the menu. This will be used to enable and disable all the buttons within a pop-up menu. And we make this an array to grab all of the different parent nodes in the case that there are buttons that are children of different nodes or containers. Anim player is an animation player that is linked to the menu and will be used to play the show and hide animation for this menu, which show anim and hide anim are the name of the respective animations. Additionally, if you don't have an animation for hiding or showing the menu, don't worry as we will add support to just edit visibility of the menu parent instead. Now we will create a custom node that we can add like any other node in Godot, which will hold all the logic and data for our menu scenes, create a new scene with the basic node as the core, right click, rename, rename it to menu input manager, then go to scene, scene save as, and save it. Finally, while menu input manager is selected, add a script. Inside the script, we will first define a class name of menu input manager. This is the name that we will use to add this node later. With Godot's add node window, we will then establish six variables in one enum. Base menu will hold all the data of the lowest level menu. This is the menu that won't have its visibility disabled. An example of this is like the play options and exit button on a main menu, whereas pop-up menus will hold an array of all the other pop-up or sub menus in the scene. An example of this is like the options menu or a level select that is embedded inside the main menu scene. Pop-up menu stack will hold all the currently open pop-up or sub menus. That way we know what menu to enable and disable when opening more menus inside of menus. Current default button stores the default button of the currently active menu or pop-up menu. This will be used when switching from the mouse to a keyboard or controller, as we will need to grab focus of an input to allow for the keyboard or controller to start navigating the menu. However, in the case that we are switching from the mouse and the mouse was actively hovering a button node, then we will make this last of a node grab focus or a more seamless transition from the mouse to a keyboard or controller. Last control type will state what controls we are currently using. This variable will be used to make sure the code for switching to a different control type only runs once, and we will use the enum to make the value of this variable more readable. Although, keep in mind that this is just a more readable version of writing 0 for the first value, or 1 for the second, as that is what last control type will actually equal. Next, we first need to set up the various buttons and nodes in the menu to support this menu input manager. Inside the built-in ready function, we will first set the current default button to the base menu's default button. We do this as the base menu is what should only be open at the start of the scene. Then for enabling and disabling the focus and hover of the various button nodes. We need to create a function to help with this. We will create a custom function called setup nodes and buttons, which will have two built-in variables. Node is what we are enabling or disabling, and is base menu is whether this node is a part of the base menu or not. This is needed as it will tell us whether the node deserves to be enabled or not, as no pop-up menu node should be enabled from the startup. Before we continue with this custom function, we must create another function to help. Is hover focusable will help us determine if the node we are checking is a node that can be hovered or focused, like a button node or a range node. This will receive a node as a built-in variable, and we do a minus greater than towards bool, as we intend for this function to equal a value of true or false, based on if the node is one that can be hovered or focused, allowing us to use this function on the node that we are setting up, and we simply return node is, for each of the different types of nodes that we want to consider hoverable and focusable. This includes the base button, which covers all types of button nodes, range, item list, tree, text edit, and line edit. And using return will make this function equal the value that it's returning, which if the node is one of the types listed, then this will return true, else it'll return false, and we make this its own function as this line is very long and we want the code to be more readable, as Godot unfortunately doesn't have any other way of determining what nodes are focusable and hoverable. Back inside the setup nodes and buttons function, we will first check if the node is not hover focusable. Then we will set the mouse filter of the node to mouse filter ignore. This will make it so that the node can't grab focus of the mouse, stopping it from blocking other nodes that we want to have mouse input. Else, if it is hover focusable, then we need to create another custom function. This will be called on menu button hovered, and we'll have a built-in variable called menu button, and we will call this function to update the last hover node to the menu button that is calling this function. Additionally, we do a check if the mouse filter of the node allows for mouse hover, by making sure its mouse filter is equal to mouse filter stop. Then back inside the setup nodes and buttons function, we will check if the node's mouse entered signal is not connected to the on mouse button hovered function. Then we will connect it using bind with the node to make the function's built in variable mouse button equal to this node. This will basically make sure that the last hovered node is set properly when the mouse hovers over a new node. And we also make sure that the mouse filter is equal to stop so that we don't count nodes from pop up menus that aren't open or active. Next, we check if this node is not a part of the base menu. If so, then we set the mouse filter to ignore so that there is no mouse interaction with the node as no pop up should be active at this time. Then we also set the focus mode to none so that the node isn't able to. 
to be focused. Lastly, we iterate through every child of the node. Then we check if the node is a control or green colored node. Then we call this function again, passing the child. This will make sure that we set up all the nodes that are children of the first node pass, as well as the children of their children as well, effectively setting up every node in the scene. Then back inside the ready function, we will call the setup nodes and buttons function, passing the menu parent of the base menu and true as this is the base menu. Then for the pop-ups, we will iterate through every menu inside the pop-up menu array and call setup nodes and buttons for them as well, passing false as they are pop-up menus and not the base menu. Next, we will create a custom function to enable and disable all the different parents and their children of a menu. We will call this function enable disable menu and it will hold two built-in variables. Menu will hold an array of node paths, which this variable will be equal to the button parents value of the menu that we want to enable or disable. Then enable is whether we want to enable or disable the menu and its children. Then we iterate through every path inside the menu array. Then we grab each node that is a child of the path. Then we check if the node is hover focusable. If so, then we set the focus mode to mouse filter based on if enable is equal to true or not. Then in the case that enable is false, then we call release focus to remove any focus that the nodes may have. Then we set the last hovered node to null if it was equal to this node. We do this as enable being false means that this node shouldn't be able to be hovered. And finally, we call this function again, passing the path of this node inside of an array to satisfy the type in of the built-in menu variable. And we also pass enable. This will make sure that every node of the menu and their children are enabled or disabled. To open a menu, we will create a custom function called open menu, which will have two built-in variables. Menu node is the menu parent of the menu that we are trying to open. And this will be used to identify the menu's data inside either the base menu or the pop-up menus. And open a button is the button being used to open this menu, which we will keep track of this so that we can grab focus of this button when exiting the menu, making it more seamless when closing the menu using a controller or a keyboard. Then before we continue, we will create a custom function called find menu data, which will provide the data of the menu that we are trying to open. This will receive the menu node as a built-in variable. Then we make this function's type in the menu config resource, as we intend to make this function equal to the menu data. Then we check if the menu node is inside the base menu. If so, then we return the base menu, which return will not only make this function equal to the value being returned, but it will also skip all the code below. So in the case that the menu node is not a part of the base menu, then we will iterate through every menu inside the pop-up menu array. Then we will check if their menu parent is the same as the menu node. If so, then we return that menu. And in the case that neither the base menu nor any pop-up menu contains this node, then we will return null, meaning that we couldn't get the menu's data. Then back inside the open menu function, we will create a variable called menu resource that will be equal to the menu data of the menu node by using the find menu data function, passing the menu node. Then we will check if not menu resource, meaning that it equals null and we couldn't get the menu data. Then we will push warning that a menu doesn't exist, which push warning will print the text under the debugger tab inside of errors. Then we will call return to skip all the code below as we couldn't find a menu to open. Additionally, by writing return on its own, we can just use it as a means of skipping code below in a function. Then we call enable disable menu on the menu that we did find, passing true to enable the menu and its children. Then if the pop-up menu stack is more than zero, meaning that it was a pop-up menu that opened this menu, then we disable the pop-up menu that opened this menu, which we can grab the last value in a pop-up menu stack array by using the back function. Then we also make sure to grab that value's config resource value. Then we grab the button parents and we pass false to disable the menu. Each value inside the pop-up menu stack array will have two values, one for the config resource and another for the opener button, which is why we add this part where we grab the config resource. Then in the case that it wasn't a pop-up menu that opened this menu, meaning that it was the base menu that opened it, then we will disable the base menu. Then for the animation of opening this menu, we will create a variable called animation player node, which will equal null if there is no defined animation player. Else, we will grab the animation player node associated with this menu. Then we check if there is an animation player node, that there is a show animation defined, and that this animation player node has that show animation. Then we play that show animation. Next, we set the menu to be visible, and we can also set the modulator A to 1.0. We do this in the case that you have a closed animation and not an open animation, or if you have no animation or animation player and are just relying on the visibility to be true or false. Although, based on the animations inside of your game, if they happen to use modulate.a inside of the animation, then remove this line, but the visibility line should be fine to keep. Then for the pop-up menu stack, we will add a dictionary value using append, which append will add the value to the end of the array. And this will hold the menu data of the new menu and its open a button. This is what I meant earlier by the value of the pop-up menu stack having two values inside and why we needed to grab the config resource explicitly. Finally, we set the current default button to the default button of this menu. And if we are using focus input, then we will grab focus of that new default button. Now to close the menu that we have opened, we will create a custom function called close menu. Inside, we will define three variables to make the code cleaner and easier to read. Menu being closed will equal the last value of the pop-up menu stack array, which we use pop back instead of the back function, as pop back will not only provide the last value in the array, but it will also remove that value right after. Closing menu resource will equal the menu data or config resource of the menu being closed, and closing menu open a button will equal the open a button that opened the menu that we are closing. Then we will disable this closing menu, passing the button parents of the closing menu resource, and false to disable the menu. Then for animating this menu closing, we will create a variable like before, which will equal null if there is no animation player defined, else it will equal the assigned animation player. Then we check if there is an animation player, that there is a hide animation defined, and that the animation player has the hide animation. Then we play that animation, else we set the menu that we are closing to be invisible. We use else as we don't want to interfere with any animation that exists, whereas with opening a menu, setting it to be visible will have no impact on the animation, so we didn't bother putting it in an else like this. Then for the new menu that we will enable, which is the menu before the one that is being closed, we will create a variable called current config, which will equal the menu that we will want to enable. Then we check if the pop-up stack is more than zero, meaning that there is a pop-up 
menu opened. This was why we did pop back so that this closing menu isn't considered here. Then we set the current config to the last pop-up menu in the array. Else, if there are no pop-up menus open, then we will just set the current config to the base menu. Then we will call the enable disable menu function, passing the current config and true to enable the menu. Finally, we set the current default button to the default button of the config menu. Then we will set the last hovered node as well to ensure that the last hovered node isn't equal to a node from the closing menu. Then we will check if we are using focus input. If so, then we check if there is an opener button and grab focus of that if there is. Else, we will just grab focus of the default button. Grabbing focus of the opener button will make it so that if we press an options button to open the options menu, then when closing that options menu, the options button will be selected, making a seamless transition between menus. Now for the input of the menus and their buttons, as well as deciding between hover input and focus input inside the built-in input function, which will pass what type of input is occurring with the event built-in variable. For the focus input, we will check if the event is either the input event key, meaning the key on the keyboard, or an input event joypad button, meaning a button on the controller, or an input event joypad motion, meaning a joystick on the controller. Then we will check if the last control type is not the focus input, meaning that we need to initiate the focus input. For this, we will make the mouse cursor hidden so that it doesn't get in the way of the game visually. Then we will call get viewport.set input as handled, which will stop the current input being pressed to activate this switch from hover input into focus input. This means that if the player presses a down arrow, we will switch to the focus input and we will ignore the down arrow press. This will allow for the switch between hover and focus mode by using any of the buttons related to the input method without it pressing or navigating the menu during the switch between the two input methods. Additionally, get viewport will grab the node created by Godot that contains all the visual information of the game and set input as handle will make sure that whatever input is being brought to the game or viewport gets ignored or considered as reacted to or handled. Then for grabbing the focus of a node, we will check if there is a last hovered node and that the node is a valid instance, meaning that it hasn't been queue freed from the scene. Then we will grab the last hovered node and call grab focus and we will set the mouse filter of the node to mouse filter ignore so that the mouse doesn't highlight the button anymore. And in the case that the mouse wasn't hovering a button when we were switching, then we will check if there is a default button and we will grab focus of that node instead. Lastly, we update the control type to the focus input. Additionally, to provide a back button that exits menus like the B or circle button on a controller, we can check for the input that would be the back button and that there is a pop-up menu open by checking that there is any entry inside the pop-up menu stack array. Then we just call the close menu function. Also, when it comes to input for controllers, there is some setup that you have to do. Go to project, project settings, under input map, enable show built-in actions. We must do this as for focus nodes. Go to will use input like UI left, UI right, UI up, and UI down to navigate. So if you want to add input for navigation, like adding WASD, then press the plus next to the input name, type or find the key, then press OK. Now for pressing a button, go to will use UI accept. For this, we must add an input to allow the controller to press buttons. Press the plus next to the UI accept. Drop down joypad buttons. We will select joypad button zero, which is the Sony Cross or Xbox A, then press OK. This will allow the controller to press buttons on our menus. Now because we are using UI cancel for the back button, which if you were using a custom input, then edit that instead. We'll also have to add the input for the controller. Press the plus and under joypad buttons, we'll add joypad button one, which is the Sony Circle or Xbox B button and press OK. Again, if you were using a custom input for the back button, then edit that instead. Although I recommend using the UI inputs for simplicity across your game when it comes to interacting with the menus or control nodes using a controller or a keyboard. Now you'll be able to navigate menus properly with a controller. For hover input or mouse input inside the built-in input function, we will check if event is either an input event mouse motion, meaning the mouse is moving, or an input event mouse button, meaning a button on the mouse. Then we will check if the last control type is not equal to the hover input, meaning that we need to initialize this input method, which we must do in the case that we make it invisible with a focus input. Then we must remove the focus of any node that has focus, which we can do by creating a variable that grabs the viewport, which is a go.made node that contains all the visual information on the game, then using GUI get focus owner to grab the node with a focus. And if there is a node with a focus, then we call release focus on that node. Then we check if there is a last hovered node and we reset its mouse filter in the case that we change it when activating the focus input. And finally, we update the last control type to the hover input. An example of using this system is to go to the menu that you want to handle the input of, then press the plus, type menu input manager. Keep in mind that this is the class name that we defined earlier in the script. Then press create to add the node to the scene. For the base menu, we will select empty and create a new menu config resource. And we will then add all the data of this menu. For the menu parent, we select assign. Then we select the topmost node of the base menu. Then for the default button, we select what node that we want to grab focus of when the game starts or when switching between the two input methods. I will choose my play button. Then for the button parents, I will press add element. Then for the parent, I will select the node that is a parent of the buttons. You may have multiple containers that have buttons. So make sure that you have an entry for each parent. Then my base buttons doesn't have an animation player. So I will skip that for now. Although keep in mind that this won't make the code not work as these variables are optional and the system will just set visibility of the menu. Now for a pop-up menu, we will add element, create a new menu config resource. For the menu parent, I will select the topmost node of my settings menu. Notice how the different pop-up menus in the base menu are under separate parent nodes and how the settings menu isn't a child of the base menu node. This is important for enabling and disabling a menu as they must be unconnected menu parent nodes. For the default button, I will just set it to the back to menu button. Then for the button parents, I will add element, then select the parent of my settings button. Now for animation, the system is mostly built around each menu having their own animation player with a show and hide animation. The reason why we have separate animation players for each menu is to ensure that animations don't overlay other animations in the case that the player is going from one menu to another really quickly. As with multiple animation players, the animations of different menus will be handled independently from one another.
another. We will set this to the settings animation player. Then for the show animation and hide animation, we will then set the show and hide animations properly. Typing the name correctly, make sure that the letters are capitalized if the animation name is capitalized letters. You can also see that my animation is very simple, just changing the modulate and position. Additionally, if you have a show animation and no hide animation, or if you have a hide animation and no show animation, don't worry as the system will not error if there is animation missing, as the system will just set the visibility to true or false based on if we are closing or opening the menu. Now for a pop-up menu that appears within the options menu, create a new element in the pop-up menu's export variable, create a new menu config resource, and again, like the options menu, make sure its menu parent node is not a child of the options menu or any other menu, then we will set it to the options one node. For the default button, I will just set it to the exit node. Then from the menu parents, I will add element, and I will set it to the options one node, as that is the parent of the button nodes, and this pop-up menu doesn't have any animation player, so I will ignore those variables. Now to have buttons open and close various menus, select the button that you want to open a menu, then go to node, signals, right click the press signal, press connect, and select a script within your game. Do not select the menu input manager, and do not connect anything to that node, as we want the node to remain independent from any other node or scene within our game. Then press connect. Then inside the script, for opening a menu, we will grab the menu input manager node, then call the open menu function, passing the button parent node, which is the settings node, then passing the node that we want to focus when exiting the options menu, which is the options button that we use to open the options menu in the first place. Now for closing a menu, select the node that you want to close the menu, then go to node, signals, right click the press signal, press connect. Again, do not connect this node to the menu input manager, and select any other script, then press connect. We can then just grab the menu input manager, and call the close menu function. And finally, for opening up a pop-up menu that is inside of a pop-up menu, select the button that you want to open that menu, then go to node, signals, right click the press signal, press connect, and again, do not connect this to the menu input manager, then press connect, then inside the script, we'll do the exact same as when opening a menu, grabbing the menu input manager node, then calling open menu function, passing the button parent node, which is the options one node, or the topmost node of the pop-up menu that I'm trying to open, then passing the node that we want to focus when exiting this pop-up menu, which is the settings button that we use to open up this pop-up menu. And for closing that pop-up menu that is inside of a pop-up menu, select the node that you want to close that menu, then go to node, signals, right click the press signal, press connect, don't connect it to the menu input manager, and press connect, then inside the script, just grab the menu input manager, and call the close menu function. Now you have a dynamic menu UI control system that allows for mouse, keyboard, and controller input, with support for managing menu pop-ups and the animations, and don't forget you can check out the project files, link in the description.